please. Go ahead and just take it up, Jeff. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, tonight we're, we're, I've, I've got, uh, I, I got a, a little leaflet here full of uh, 36 pages. Some say, oh my God, 36 pages. We're going to be here all night long. Hallelujah. But there are Barna surveys. I don't know about you, but I like statistics. And I like to, to see the percentage of, of uh, Christians that profess Christianity what some of their beliefs are and what have you. And I was looking through this this week and studying through some of the things that, that, that what people believe and, and what they put their confidence in. And uh, I'm not going to read all of it. I'm just going, I, I want to want to touch just a couple things here just to, to show you and reveal that uh, the statistics say that America is in much danger and much decline. Are you hearing me? spiritually and morally but uh the commentary on this it says the uh, this collection is is commit uh commented on from a christian perspective helping to reveal the spiritual condition of america and the cost of spurning the right ways of the lord to follow our own lust overall it indicates how the mighty are fallen and warns of where america is surely headed when the intent that we search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. And again, it is my prayer that all souls will give their sins and their life to the Lord Jesus, the Son of the living God who gave himself for our sins and rose again. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But uh, just a, a, a few things and then we'll go into the Word of God tonight. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And some of the surveys that he has, U.S. Teen Spiritual statistics. Let me read just a few of these things here. It's an eye-opener, brothers and sisters. Hear me. 34% of U.S. teens are defined as born again. This is, it starts from clear from uh, 1999 all the way up to uh, 2009, I believe it is, some of the statistics. These are some old statistics, so you can imagine, uh, you know, some of these numbers have probably increased as well. So, but uh, 34% of U.S. teens are defined as born again. Only 4% of U.S. teens are defined as real evangelicals. 82% say they are Christian. 26% said that they absolutely committed, they are absolutely committed to the Christian faith. 83% of teens believe that moral truth depends on the circumstances. <laughs> That's just teens right now. I'll stop and think of this. It, it depends on the circumstances. I, I, you know, it, it blows your mind when you, when, you, when you read through some of this stuff. Hallelujah. Listen to what it says. 65% says the devil or Satan is not a living being but is a symbol of evil. And you know what? About that same amount as, as, as you go through this, many of the pastors believe the very same thing. It's no wonder... It's no wonder America's in the shape that it's in. Hear me, child of God. Hallelujah. 30% of teens believe that all religions are really praying to the same God. 61% agree heaven is gained by a personal, personal merit. How many believe that? Not by works, but by my grace alone. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. 53% say that Jesus committed sins while he was on earth. Now think of this. You know what? That's blasphemy. I said that's blasphemy. That's rank blasphemy. Just 22% of those ages 25 to 29 attend church in, in the last week. Only 9% of born-again teens believe, they're moral, believe there are moral absolutes. Only 57% of teens live in the same home with both of their natural parents. 65% of teenagers
Teenagers believe music, music privacy is not a moral issue. 80% of teenagers have engaged in some type of music privacy in the past six months. 39% do not believe that the Bible is the word of God. 63% do not believe that Jesus is the son of God. Boy, that's a shame, isn't it? I believe we, I believe we need to evangelize. I said we believe, I believe we need to evangelize this this. This United States of America, it needs preachers to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen? amen. 51% denied Jesus' resurrection. We're in trouble. I said we're in trouble. This is a generation coming up, folks. Hear me. Over 60% do not believe Christianity, Christianity can be proven to be true. 68 believe that all religions teach equally valid truths. Only 4% believe that the Bible is true in every circumstance. Less than 50% of teen Christians assess, uh, assent that salvation is by grace alone through faith in Christ. There is 58% decline in church attendance between ages 18 and 29. Less than 5% of the nation's churches have youth groups that attract 100 or more teenagers. Teens are not raised in families in, in a family which holds to absolute biblical truths, are 600% more likely to attempt suicide. Stop and think of this a second. Hallelujah. Uh, and, and we could go on and on and on. It's got, uh, you can do it in your own study. Just look up percentage in Barna. Research your own uh, percentage. Faith beliefs. Uh, this goes into uh, many of, the, uh, of Americans, what they believe. 59% of America's polled said religion is very important in their lives, 75% in uh, 1952. By categories, 52% of men, 66% of women, whites, 66%, blacks, 82%, Hispanics, 66%, uh, 66%, uh, 68% of self-identified conservatives, 56% uh, of moderates, and 49% of liberals said religion was very important to them. 69% of those who attend church nearly weekly say premarital sex is, is morally accepted. <laughs> Hello. 45% of so-called born-again Americans say gambling is immoral accepted behavior. More than 30% of so-called born-again adults say that cohabitation, gay sex, sexual fantasies, breaking the speed limit, are watching sexually explicit movies or morally acceptable behaviors. 33% of so-called born-again adults support the legalization of same-gender sexual relations. 80% of adults classified as born-again have been married. 27% of people identified as Christians and 23 of non-Christian have been divorced. 34% of born-again adults have been divorced after their conversion. 87% of America's polled said that their religious faith is very important in their life today. Only 50% of Christians say they are absolutely, absolutely committed to the Christian faith. Only 50%. 77% of Americans are associated with Christian faith. 12% claim to be atheistic or agnostic with the remaining 11 being aligned with some other faith group. Though upwards to 38% of Americans are classified as born again, a more precise analyst shows only 7% of the adult U.S. population being evangelical. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And, and we could go on and on and on. And it goes to the cost of, of those that believe in abortion, how much money it's costing the United States of America, especially with transmit, uh, venereal diseases, transmitted diseases, the cost that it rises up into the billions. And, and uh, it, it's it, it just an eye-opener. And like I said, we don't have time to go through all of this, and thank God that we don't. Amen? Hallelujah. But just an eye-opener to see where this nation has gone to, folk. Hear me. When people and, and pastors and people say that, hey, there is no devil, there's no, really no absolute moral absolutes, the sky's the limit of what they do. It's no wonder that we've got the shootings and robbings and what have you. Bless God. Hallelujah. Can we truly know that we're born again? I said, can we truly know that we're born again and we're not just a statistic? Are you hearing me?
that proclaim something, but truly are genuinely born again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen, hallelujah, to the Lamb. What happens when we get born again? I said, what happens when we get born again? Understand something, hallelujah, no man's going to go to heaven without being born again. No woman would be, go to heaven without being born again. Nicodem, uh, yeah, Nicodemus, uh, high priest of Jesus' day, was a religious leader, and uh, he went to Jesus at night, stealthy under the cover, so to speak, to talk with Jesus, knowing that he was a, you know, that he was sent from God. Hallelujah! And Jesus told Nicodemus, "You must be born again before you ever see the kingdom of God." Can I tell you something? And Nicodemus, he didn't have an understanding. He said, "How in the world can I enter back into my mother's womb?" Trying to comprehend. Uh, spiritual realities through the natural mind and the natural mind can't comprehend the things of the Lord and Jesus began to tell him he said that which is born of flesh is flesh and that is born of spirit is spirit and then he goes on to talk about the wind and how the wind blows bless the Lord forevermore and how that being born of the spirit you see the effects of the spirit maybe you don't see the spirit tangibly where you can handle and, and, and grab a hold of it, but you can see the effects of being born again. Somebody say amen. amen. Of being born again, you see the effects of it. Hallelujah. If there's not a change in your life, look at me, you're not born again. I'm just pl- bluntly saying it. If there's not a change in your life, you're not born again and heaven's not your home. You've got to be born again. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You know, I never knew that much about the Bible when I was born again. All I knew that, man, you know, uh, I needed a change in life. When you hit rock bottom, the only place you've got is to look up. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. And uh, you, many of, of you know my testimony. I've asked my brother to come to lead me to the Lord, and he did. I got saved in my living room. Doesn't mean that you've got to have a church to get saved in. Are you hearing me? I was talking to one person today and they was telling me that a guy was talking, he was talking to and he said that he was going to get water baptized. He was an older gentleman and he relayed to him, he said, are you born again? He said, what? He said, are you born again? He said, what in the world are you even talking about? He said, you mean tell me you don't know what being born again is? And he said, no, I never heard the term, but he's getting water baptized. What in the world can be, pre- what's, what kind of preaching is going on in the pulpit to where a person don't understand what being born again is? Are, are you hearing me? Hallelujah. And he proceeded he, to tell him that I don't think I would get baptized if I wasn't born again. Right. Because it's worthless, it means nothing. Right. Can I tell you something? It's, every one of us need to be baptized if we're born again. Right. Right. Hallelujah. But understand me, it's not water baptism that cleanses us from sin or unrighteousness. What cleanses us is the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. It's not water. Hear me, it's not infant baptism. It's not being baptized. Hear me, into the church. Hear me, child of God. But understand, hallelujah, it's being Born into the family of God. And water can't cause you to be born into the family of God. Only the blood of Jesus Christ and the simple childlike faith that I believe Jesus died on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago for my sin condition. In the heart of every man, understand me, psychology says in the, in the heart of every man, Every man has good in them, and what we determine to do is bring out that good. I've done a little study on psychology this week. Boy, I'm telling you what, you know what? That's a religion in itself. It's a religion in itself. Every man has something good on the inside, and what we try to do is bring that good out by changing their habits and bringing up some of their past subconscious of what happened in their childhood. Can I tell you something? When you're born again, I'm talking about being born again. The Bible says your sin is thrown into the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered again, not to bring them up again. 
hear me, child of God, but they're gone. Everybody say gone. One more time. They're gone. Sigmund Floyd was wrong. Hallelujah. According to Scripture, all have fallen short of the glory of God. There is none good. No, not one. Hear me. So that means one thing. Every one of us are in need of a Savior. Amen. Amen. Every one of us are in need of a Savior. But you know what? Much of the church world is opting out of the cross and going to humanistic psychology. Going to a man's program. Hear me. Where we can just change things on our own. Can I tell you something? You can't change sin. Man cannot forgive sin. But only the Son of the living God can wash you and cleanse you and write your name in the Lamb's book of life. And no matter what kind of sin you've committed... God, don't remember it. It's thrown in the sea of forgetfulness in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. As I go back to my testimony, hear me. I asked my brother to come and lead me to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and uh, uh, he come over and, and, and asked me to pray a prayer with him. And can I tell you something? It's not like a magical charm that you pray this prayer and then you just go out and live the way that you want to live. But I was sincere. I wanted to have a sincere relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If God exists, I want to know him in a personal manner. I just don't want to know him mentally, or you hear me, or just historically in some uh, history book or what have you. Hear me, I want to have a one-to-one personal relationship with him, an encounter with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, hallelujah to the Lamb. And that night when I said yes to Jesus, instantly I become a child of the living God. Nobody had to tell me anything. I knew that there was a change inside of me. Bless the Lord forevermore. You know, I get kind of disturbed a little bit when people say prayers, listen, and and ask God to forgive them, but that you see no change in their life. You know what? They might have had a, 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 a religious experience or some type of excitement, but yet never had a tr- genuine, true conversion. Everybody say conversion. conversion. One more time. Conversion. conversion, hallelujah to the Lamb. It means that you've converted from darkness into light. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I, when, I, when I was on my knees, look at me. When I went down on my knees and, and before I invited Christ into my heart and into my life, I went down a rotten sinner. But when I come back up off of those knees, I become a glorious saint of the living God. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus cloaked me in his righteousness in the name of the Lord and washed me squeaky clean in Jesus' name. And look at me. Hallelujah. I've never been the same since. And that's been over 30 some years, child of God. 30 some years. Some of you have probably been saved way longer than what I have. Hear me. But understand something. Hallelujah. He's still the same today, yesterday, and forever. What the world needs, hear me, child of God, is Jesus. What the sinner needs is Jesus. What the Christian needs is Jesus. Hallelujah. Not more of man's ingenuity or man's program. All we need is Jesus. What we talked about this morning the anointing in the house of God hallelujah that changes the lives of individuals praise the Lord the drug addict can be set free the homosexual can be set free the good old boy can be set free by the blood of Jesus Christ and him and him alone hallelujah to the lamb you don't have to be in bondage to any sin hear me Because the Bible says whom the Son has set free is free indeed. But understand something. Nobody even had to tell me that I was born again. I didn't know nothing really of the Word of God. Very little of the Word of God. But I knew, look at me, something happened on the inside of me. I knew that there was a change. Hallelujah. There's a word for that change. It's called metamorphosis. 
breakfast in the name of the Lord. I went from an old worm to a beautiful butterfly in the name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless God forevermore. I went from an old chunk of coal to a diamond in Jesus' name. Only God could do such a thing. Hallelujah to the Lamb. There's a change that goes on. Look at me when people say, I've been born again or I'm Christian. Hallelujah. People say, uh, you can go out and take a poll on the streets of America and they'll say, well, you know, we're, uh, we're all Christians. Because I live in America, well, I'm a Christian. No, 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 no. Hear me. Understand something. You can only be Christian if you're Christ-like. And the only way you're going to be Christ-like is to have Christ living on the inside Amen. of you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. What happens when Christ comes into my heart, into my life? What happens when He comes into your heart and into your life? In Hebrews 10, 16, and 17, it says this. Hebrews 10, 16, and 17, it says... This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Hallelujah. Somebody gave me this years ago a a hunk of rock with the Ten Commandments wrote on it. Under the Old Covenant, as Moses went up Sinai, he gave the Ten Commands. And understand, they was commands and not suggestions. And everybody said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And God wrote these commands with his own finger on the tables of stone. But can I tell you something? When a person is genuinely born again, the Bible says he don't write the laws on on tablets made of stone, but he said, I'll write my laws in your heart and in your minds where you will obey me. Hallelujah. I didn't have to tell anybody after I got saved. I didn't have to have anybody tell me I can't steal anymore. I didn't have to have anybody tell me, you can't lie anymore. John, you're, you used to be a state highway patrolman, and, and uh, you probably heard all kinds of excuses about, you know, if there was speed. And they probably told you all different types of excuses. When I first got saved, hear me, went to church, blessed God, running down the highways. Many of you have heard this testimony. Listen to me. Hallelujah. I had a, a, a Chevy 409 with a holly... A carburetor, and those carburetors would plug up all the time. They would glog up, and the only way you get rid of it is you got to put the pedal to the metal and just blow it out, blow the soot out. And that's what it was just doing, that chucking, chucking thing, going, and I went, poof, down 30, going to Lima to get me a Bible, hallelujah, and some, t- and some good duds, some clean clothes. And all of a sudden, here comes a state highway patrolman going by me. And I looked in my mirror, and I seen his lights flip on. He'd done a U.E. and come right up in behind me and pulled over. And he said, do you know how fast you was going? I said, yep. And you know what? I, before, I would try to lie my way out of it. But you know what? Something on the inside of me said, you need to tell the truth. You need to tell the truth. Are you hearing me? Even though I told the truth, I don't think he let me go. That's been quite some time ago. But hear me, child of God. I knew there was a change in my life because you know what? I don't lie no more. Those lies, look at me, hear me. Hallelujah. They went by the wayside in the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me. Can I tell you something? That was written on the tablet of my heart. I didn't have to look at it on stone, but something was inside of me telling me, you got to speak truth. My, 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 wouldn't it be an awesome thing for this whole nation to get saved? 
Woo! Yeah. Come on. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb. It's kind of like that commercial. Have you seen that commercial? I forget what it is that Pinocchio or whatever, that guy on the, on the commercial. And he said, every one of you has got potential here. And his nose keeps going right on out. Looks at one guy and he said, you've got potential. And it grows out about that long. He was telling a lie. Hear me, child of God. We might slip up now and then, but as soon as you slip up, I'll guarantee you there's somebody on the inside of you telling you you need to repent. Come on. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. It's called the blessed Holy Spirit. Anybody that is born again, look at me. God puts his spirit on the inside of you and you become a new creation in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. You're converted. Bless God. Some might say you went off the deep end. But I say, no, I've been born again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some might not understand you. Look at me. Before I was ever saved, I didn't understand Christians. I didn't under. Matter of fact, I had a brother that was saved. I wanted to throw him in a nut house because I thought he, he, he dropped off a turnip truck someplace. Hear me. Hallelujah. But can I tell you something? I became one of those turnips that fell off the truck. Not long after that, bless the Lord forevermore. And can I tell you something? It's the best thing I've ever done in my life, best decision that I've ever made in my life. Hallelujah. And I've made many decisions and many wrong decisions, but I did make one right decision. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And can I tell you something? Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful. I'm so happy that I made that decision because that decision caused my name to be written in the Lamb's book of life. That decision brought contentment and joy unspeakable in my soul. That, that decision brought peace and rest and life, and life more abundantly on the inside of me. I don't know why I didn't commit earlier, but praise God forevermore, look at me. I made that decision to make him the Lord of my life in Jesus' name, and I've not been the same since. Hallelujah. I told people before, and I said this, I told them, I said, you know what, back when I was in high school, and back when I was probably uh, in my early 20s, that's been a long time ago. <laughs> and somebody told me, if somebody come up and said, you're going to be a preacher, I'd probably poke them right between the nose right now, right between the eyes. That's, how, that's how, uh, how hatred I was towards Christianity. I didn't want nothing to do with it because I was having a fun time. Are you hearing me? The Bible says sin is fun for a season. Then the devil pulls the rug out from underneath of you. And he sits back and just laughs at you. Can I tell you something? Christ will never pull the rug out from underneath of you. And even if the rug is pulled out from underneath of you, he's there to catch you in his arms in the name of the Lord. My God, I feel like preaching here tonight in the name of the Lord. Hear me. Hallelujah. Best decision that any person could ever make. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I could probably give, ask the show of hands for testimonies in here of what Christ has done in your life and when Christ, hallelujah, when you accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. I'm going to, Enoch, you you got a powerful testimony. Would you just give your testimony how the Lord dealt with your heart? I mean, just don't go preaching and taking the service. I still got a lot to say. Well, you better move on then. <laughs> <laughs> talk, but don't talk. <laughs> it's kind of like when I did a thing in Wayne Trace. The, uh, the school board come up to me and said, Ten minutes, that's all you can do. Ten minutes. I can do a lot in ten minutes. <laughs> I can do a lot in ten minutes. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, brother. Well, you know, I, I, I got saved. Drifted 
away from the things of God. And you know what? I really and truthfully believe from then on for 30 some years, walking and running from God, I think I had more wrath that was poured out my way from backsliding than I probably would have before that. Yeah. But I know I got hooked into the, the, the bands of the world, the drinking. I mean, it was just a weekend party to look forward to that. Car wrecks. Then I got hooked into gambling. was probably the worst thing that ever happened to me, you know. And it's just like the drinking and everything. You start out small. Pretty soon it's got you hooked. And then there's no end. And I was in that for 25 years. And I said, you know, 10, probably 10 years into it, I had a Christian guy at work. And at the time, it was meaningless to me, but it was God sending a message to me. He talked to me at dinner time one day, and he said, Edie, you're getting really wrapped up in this gambling. I'm, I'm, I'm scared for you. And I said, what do you mean, man? It's fun. And, and he said, don't never let it lead you to the place where you want to take your life. And I said, take my life. I'm having the time of my life. I said, it's great, you know. Little did I know, you know, probably 12, 13 years later after that, I was at that point for three years probably, you know, just the thought of suicide constantly because I had nothing to live for. You have no tomorrow. Yeah. You live for no what hope. you have today, and sometimes you hate to see tomorrow come because it's more of the same. Yeah. I went through all the, the pills that the doctors could give me, and, and they helped for a while, but then it would drive me more toward suicide. Yeah. And, uh, you know, till the day come, I, I, I sat for me and my wife for, I'd say, 10 months before we got saved. And, and we would listen to the swaggers on TV. I'm not building them up, but that's where it comes from. That's where I got my teachings from. And we would sit and cry. God would heal them with our hearts. We were Christians without being born again. We, I mean, we were living a life like that. We were not doing anything. We right. were, we were good people, but we were not saved. But that day came, you know, that uh, the Holy Spirit, I was home by myself, and the Holy Spirit said, you'll run no more. You know, it was another day like any other day. Amen. I was going about my business. I'd come in and listen a little bit, and I'd get up and go back. But that day came when the Holy Spirit got a hold of me, and uh, He said, I'm going to clean you up. And you know, just like you, when I fell on my knees in that living room, I cried out to God. I went down to nobody. I come up with something. Yes, sir. Sure. Jesus, you know I'll tell you what. He has, he has cleansed. I know it don't happen immediately with everybody, but he cleansed all that garbage from me. I said, I want none. I want a new life. Yeah. And he took it all from me, and, and all that I've done, I hate the sight of it today. Yeah. And you know, that's in my heart. But I praise God that, that he took it all from me, gave me a new life. And I tell you what, I, I don't want to do nothing but just sing and praise his glory. Because you know, awesome. you know, I know where he took me from. I was, I was at that. I was at that age. Right. Where, you know, I don't, I, I can't say it, but I just don't think I would have been be living today if, if I would have continued in that road. Amen. But through Him, I'm, I'm ready to live and I'm ready to praise God and see how many other people we can lead, lead, lead out of that same life that we did. Exactly. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Bless the Lord. Everything that he's saying, you didn't go over 10 minutes either, brother. I, I was timing you. No, I was just joking. <laughs> Everything he was saying was change. There's a change. There's a change. There's a change. It's like turning the light switch off and turning it back on. Instantly, understand me, instantly things change in your life. Now, I realize some things hang on for a little while. But understand me, instantly you know that there's been a change in your life. Some of you had a potty mouth. Your mouth was so rotten you couldn't speak a good word. Are you hearing me without profanity coming out of it? But once you've accepted Christ into your heart and into your life, bless the Lord, now it's nothing but praises and blessings and thanksgivings comes out of that instantly. Hallelujah, when you get saved. When I, when, when I went down as a sinner, look at me, I was always cursing God. But when I come up off of there, I was praising him. I said, thank you, Lord, for giving me life. Thank you, Lord, for saving 
my soul. There's a change on the inside. And I get a little bit aggravated, look at me, when people, there's no change, but yet they, they profess Christianity. Can I tell you something? They might have religion, but they don't have relationship. They might have religion, but no relationship. They go through a lot of religious rhetoric and a lot of religious routine and activity and do a lot of religious things, but they have no relationship with Jesus Christ. There's a difference between religion and relationship. Thank God when you're born again, look at me, hallelujah to the Lamb. We've got a relationship with the God that created us and formed us in our mother's womb in the name of the Lord. Look at me. Hallelujah. There's a movie out. God's not dead. Can I tell you something? I don't even have to go to the movie to know that not God's not dead. He's alive in me because he's changed me from the inside out in Jesus' name. Glory to God. I can look back at our brother Joe. Been saved for how many years, Joe, now? Ten years. Ten years. I look at brother Joe. And his life was a life of shambles. Look at me. An alcoholic... Couldn't get off of alcohol, tried to get off, tried everything he could possibly do, couldn't do it. But when Christ come into your life, what happened, Joe? Never alcohol. Think of that. Think of that. Only God could do such things. And Joe went to AA, he went to Alcoholics Anonymous, he said, but that didn't help him. They said a lot of good things, but Christ is the one that delivered him and set him free. In the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Hear me. Bless God. We don't have to be subject to any bondage of sin because Christ settled the account 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb forevermore and evermore. I think of some of these young ones who have just got born again. Bless the Lord forevermore and God working in their hearts and working in their lives. Hear me. Bless the Lord. We should have been here tonight to hear what we had to say because there's a change that goes on constantly and continuously. Look at me. Even though I've been saved over 30-some years, close to 40, look at me. There's still a change in me. God is still changing me day by day. Somebody say amen. amen. Well, when will this change stop? I'll tell you when it stops. When we go upward in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's when it is. Bless the Lord. But hear me. A genuine born again Christian, look at me, does not desire to sin. John, 1 John tells you about that. Hear me. He doesn't have inside of him a spirit that habitually wants to sin. Hear me. Although there's times we do sin as being Christians. But that doesn't mean that I'm not born again. Come on. Hear me. Because we still have flesh. And sometimes we falter and we fail. But thank God, Jesus said if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to, for, for, to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, dust us off, pat us on the back and say, keep on pursuing, son, in the name of the Lord. Here's what happens to a lot of new converts. They find themselves, listen, doing, maybe flubbing up and sinning, and the devil comes along with condemnation and says, see, you're not even saved. You're not even saved. You wouldn't be doing those things if you wasn't saved. Hear me. But folk, understand me. I'm looking at a people that are not perfect and you're looking at a preacher that's not perfect in the name of the Lord. There's nobody perfect on the face of the earth. There was one perfect and thank God he lives in me through the power of the Holy Spirit. And look at me. He's perfecting the very thing that he has placed within me by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of the Lord. Man can't change you, but the Spirit of God can transform you into the image of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Hallelujah. A preacher can't do it. A denomination can't do it. Your water baptism can't do it. Hear me. But God can do it through the power of the Holy Spirit that he places on the inside of 
you. Anybody that professes Christianity, look at me. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God lives on the inside of you. And the Spirit of God is holy. That's the characteristic of the Spirit of God. That's the characteristic of the Spirit. Excuse me, Greg, for spitting on you. But that's the, that's the characteristic. Hear me. That's the characteristic. It's just like Joe. <laughs> that's the characteristic of what comes into your life is holiness. The Holy Spirit is holy. Hallelujah. So that he might produce holiness inside of us. You can't do that on your own. Hear me. I don't care how many hoops you jump through or somebody wants you to jump through or whatever. Hear me. Any constitution or bylaw to follow. Hear me. Some doctrine or creed of a, of a church. Listen to me. That will not make you holy. The only thing that will make you holy is the third person of the Trinity living this life in and through you in the name of the Lord. I can't live up to these commands. Not in myself. There's no way. But can I tell you something? I can live it through the life of the Spirit of God inside of me. The Holy Spirit, bless God, produces the righteousness that God desires of each and every one that profess Christianity in the name of the Lord. Does that make sense? Am I making sense tonight? Hear me. Hallelujah. Ezekiel eleven nine says, And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh or a heart of love or a, new, or a renewed heart. What happens when I receive Christ? Look at me. That old stony heart is taken, taken out. Or let me put it this way. That old stony heart or the sin nature is still in the person, but that sin nature needs to be dead to sin and alive unto Christ. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah to the Lamb. And how do we render it dead? By looking to the cross daily. Take up your cross and follow Him daily. Look into the cross. There's where the old man was crucified. When Christ was crucified, He took your, your sin problem. He took your, your problem, your drinking problem. He nailed it to the cross. Hear me. Every sin that had ever ever been committed Christ took it to the cross and nailed it to the cross and therefore we put our trust and our confidence in that and that alone in the name of the Lord and can I tell you something look at me the Holy Spirit gives us a soft heart a heart of love and purity and righteousness in the name of the Lord I want us to look at something in Ephesians if you would please Ephesians the second chapter hallelujah Ephesians, the second chapter, 1 through 6, Paul describes this very clearly as well as he writes to the church at Ephesus. Listen to what he says. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Hallelujah. That quickened means come alive. I Look at me. Before I ever accepted Christ into my heart and my life, look at me, I was a dead man walking. We was dead in our sins and trespasses. In the, in the state penitentiary, hear me, somebody that's on death row, they're called a dead man walking. Are you hearing me? Can I tell you something? I once used to be a dead man walking, but now I'm a live man, hallelujah, walking this walk by the power of God's Holy Spirit and His Holy Spirit alone. Praise the Lord forevermore. Wherein in times past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Who do you suppose he's talking about there? Satan. Satan. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation, help me, in times past, in the lust of our flesh, 
fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But I like this fourth verse. Read with me. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherein he loved us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Now look at this next one. Read. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are you saved. Before you was ever converted, look at me, child of God. God loved you and called you by name. What you had to do is accept the mercy and accept the grace. Hallelujah. And God would do the rest in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank God for mercy. Thank God for grace. Hallelujah to the Lamb because every one of us deserve the doom of hell. But hear me. Thank God Christ took the beating. Thank God Christ took the nails. Hear me. Thank God Christ took the crown of thorns. Bless the Lord. Thank God he took the whipping post. It wasn't for him. It was for the world. It was for mankind that we might have fellowship with an awesome God. And it's, you know what? It's, it's something to think about. And I'm going to do this maybe this week or next week coming up. The Lord should tell him going to a minister on the tabernacle. But at that time when Christ said it is finished, now understand something. Man could not have a personal one-to-one relationship with God. And in the old covenant tabernacle, there was a, there was a partition between the holy place and the holy of holies. God said, I would dwell in the holy of holies. Only the high priest could go into the holy of holies at once a year to atone for the sin of Israel. That petition blocked man off from getting into God. But when Christ said, it is finished, and he gave up the ghost, something happened in the tabernacle. That curtain was ripped from top to bottom, displaying that there's a way into the very presence of God himself through the blood of God's Son, Jesus Christ, to where we can come boldly to lay our petitions before him. Wow. I don't know about you, that's good news. I said that is good news, hallelujah, to the Lamb. God once again reunited with mankind. And the only way that you can have relationship with God is that you've got to personally invite his son, Jesus Christ, into your heart and into your life. And then we can come in boldly before the throne room of grace in heaven and lay our petitions before God. Hallelujah. Then we can say, good morning, Father. Then we can call him Father. Jesus teaching his disciples. The disciples said, you know, John taught his disciples how to pray. Teach us how to pray, Lord. He said, pray in this manner. Our Father, which art in heaven. Aren't you glad he didn't say, my Father, which art in heaven. But he said, our Father, which means, hear me, he's your Father if you accept the Son in Jesus' name. I don't know about you, but I don't know him as a pie in the sky. I don't know him by the, by, the, by the big man on the cloud. Are you hearing me? But I know him as my heavenly father. He has placed his spirit on the inside of me, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, our daddy, Father, hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. He's not some distant foe, but he's been made, we've been made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. He's just as far away as a mere whispered prayer. Father, I come in the name of Jesus. And instantly, you're in the presence of God Almighty. I don't have to jump through a hoop. I don't have to have any type of sacraments. Hear me. I don't have to do any type of penance. Somebody say, thank God. Hallelujah. All I got to do is believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Believe that he took your sin on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. And accept his atoning blood in your heart and in your life. And look at me. You become a brand new person in Christ Jesus the Lord. 
Paul said, old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. We're a, cre- a new creation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me finish up this, uh, these scriptures in Ephesians. Hallelujah. A third verse, among whom also we all had our conversation time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in his mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we're dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. Now look at this, it gets better. Hallelujah, sixth verse, read it. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. (laughs) Hallelujah to the Lamb. But I love that sixth verse. Bless the Lord and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus our Lord. Positionally, we're still right here on the face of the earth. Hear me. All right, I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Physically, we're here on the face of the earth. But positionally, we're seated in the heavenlies with Christ Jesus. How in the world can that be? Because, hear me, when he was on the cross, you was on his mind. When he ascended, look at me, you ascended with him. You know why? Because your life is hid in Christ. Bless the Lord. One day, hear me, child of God, spiritually, we'll all stand before the throne of Christ and we'll all cast our crowns at his feet Hallelujah. because he's the one that gives us the faith to get yeah. saved. Yeah. He's the one that gives us the victory, hear me, yeah. hallelujah, to live victorious over the flesh, the devil, and the world in the name of the Lord Jesus, hallelujah, to the Lamb. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one that saved me, by his grace, hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. But going back to 2 Corinthians five seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Jeremiah 24, 7 says, And I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Christ breaks the chains of sin and death, hallelujah, and releases the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, my Lord, inside of me. Hear me, the thief cometh not to steal, but but to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, I've come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I don't know about you, but hear me. I once was on the losing side. I'm on the victory side now. I stand with the King of kings and the Lord of lords and live an abundant life living in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let me ask the question, how many saved people do we have in here tonight? Can you lift your hands and say, thank God I made that decision years and years and years ago. Or I made it just recently. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a powerful thing, hear me, to know your God. Not just know about Him, but I know Him. Hallelujah. I fellowship with Him every day. Hallelujah. I read His Word daily. Bless God. And His Word speaks into me. Why? Because the Word is alive. It's active. It's operative. It's energizing. It comes alive because of the Holy Spirit inside of us. Bless the Lord forevermore. And you don't want to rebel against God's word, but you want to obey the word of the living God. Amen? Hallelujah. And uh, we're going we're gonna to close here shortly. But this is what God can do in an individual's life. We're studying through the book of Mark on Wednesdays. We're getting down to about the end of it. But in the fifth chapter, I believe around the fifth chapter, Jesus said that, that he must go over on the other side of the sea. 
And there was a purpose in him going to the other side of the sea. There was a man that was demon-possessed that lived in tombs with the dead, cutting himself and crying, here it made day in and day out. They tried to chain him and shackle him, hear me, so that he wouldn't wound anybody that was walking by. He was nothing but an animal. He was demon possessed. Well, I don't believe in that. Well, that's, the, you know, you might not believe in it, but it's still truth. It's in the Word of God. Hear me. And can I tell you something? There's a lot of demon possessed people today, but we just call it a, a, a different name. Hear me. But this man was mentally insane. And the devil was making him like that. Anybody that, that's living in a graveyard, hear me, and living amongst the dead, something's wrong up here. The devil was literally possessed this man. And Jesus said, I must go to the other side. And he went to the other side for one person personally. For this demon-possessed man that wants to be released and set free from this demonic power. Can I tell you something? No man's program can set an individual's free. But the spirit of the living God can break and sever every yoke of bondage in the name of the Lord. Just what we said this morning in Jesus' name. And can I tell you something? When Jesus stepped his foot upon guardians, hear me. That demonic came out and bowed a knee unto the Lord Jesus Christ and said, Jesus, thou son of God. Can I tell you something? The, the devils have more knowledge of Jesus as being the son of God as much, much, most church people. Amen. Have you, you come to torment us before our time? Think of this. The God that I serve, the spirit of God that lives on the inside of me is the very same spirit that possessed Jesus. Hear me, child of God. Hallelujah. And you know what? They said, have you come to torment us before our time? And he said, permit us. Don't cast us out into the abyss because one day that's where they're gone, every one of them. I don't want to be cast into the abyss. But permit us to go into the swine. And Jesus permitted them to go into the swine and release this man. And the swine, hear me, I don't know how many hundreds there was, several hundred, they ran violently over a cliff and committed suicide. That's what the devil can do. Hear me. But the man that was possessed with these devils, legions, hear me, over 6,000, a legion army, Roman legion is 6,000. He's in his right mind now. He's got clothes on before. He always streaked. He was running naked all the time. He was cutting himself. But now he was in his right mind. Hear me. Now he was completely whole. He had his mind. Bless the Lord. God restored everything back to him. He was clothed. Hallelujah. And he said, Lord, I want to follow you. And the Lord says, no, go on home and show your family what God has done for you. Yeah. And you know what? He went home and the whole city of Decapolis looked at him and said, my Lord, is not this the guy that we tried to chain? Is not this the guy that lived in the tombs, hear me, and cut himself and howled around like a dog? Is not this the same God, our same guy? Hear me, and the Bible said that they all marveled. Hear me. Understand something. When you get saved... Many times, even your own family that are not saved will marvel at the change that has taken place in your life. Hear me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Folk, if we could have seen the spiritual when I went down on my knees and invited Christ into my heart, the devils that went out of me and God replaced the Spirit of the Lord oh, yeah. inside of me in the name of the Lord Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Understand me. Every person, I don't care if they're a good old boy or a good old girl, hear me, child of God. Hallelujah. They're led by the spirit of disobedience. They're led by the spirit of the world, which is 
Antichrist, Satan himself, and they can be delivered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ if they'll only let Christ come into their hearts and into their lives. There's really been a change. Hallelujah. Zacchaeus up in a tree, and Jesus passes by, and Zacchaeus, come out of that tree, for today I must abide at your house. And the Bible says, Zacchaeus gladly received him. And one of the first things that come out of his mouth, here's genuine conversion, because Matthias was a tax collector. Uh, Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He made his living off of cheating. Hear me. And this is one of the first things that come out of his mouth. Lord, if I've cheated anybody, I'll pay them back a hundredfold. How many know there's been a conversion there someplace along the line? Because before he was cheating. Hear me, but now he's not cheating anymore. Why? Because Jesus is abiding in his house. Can I tell you when Christ comes in and abides in your house, look at me, the sin nature is nailed to the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. And we want to do those things that make for edification and exhortation, purity, holiness, and sanctification to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I know him on a personal one-to-one level. Hallelujah. I'm glad I've got a relationship and not religion. Religion would be the most boringest thing that could ever happen to a human being. People today are sitting in dead, stagnated churches of religiosity. Are you hearing me? And it's no wonder they fall asleep. It's no wonder they do, all they got is a 15-minute sermonette and out the door. Because the preacher don't have nothing to say. But brother, when you've got Christ living on the inside of you, you've got a lot to say. Amen. I said, you've got a lot to say. Hallelujah. He set me free. He Amen. set me free. He broke the, the bonds of prison for me. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on a rock. To stay. He puts a song in my soul today, a song of praise. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord forevermore. Thank God these chains are broken in the name of the Lord. Don't you have a song like that, Enoch? These chains are broken. Bless the Lord. You don't have that, do you? Do you have it? Get up here and sing it for us. Would you do that? Bless the Lord. I'll give you 10 minutes. <laughs> Have Christ Jesus in you, you have a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> Sing it, brother. <laughs> the chains are gone. That's amazing grace, isn't yeah. it? Amen. Powerful song. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Tom on the spot now. Remember, this is not rehearsed. He didn't know he was going to sing, and I didn't either. <laughs>